Today we're going to take a look at the Xamarin iOS Designer for Visual Studio. I've already gone ahead and created the beginnings of a small application that we'll be using today to demonstrate the, the designer. Now within it, I have two view controllers which are added from the toolbox onto the designer surface by dragging and dropping a view controller. So that's what I have here. The first one is actually created with the project template that, that you create the project with. Uh, and I use the single view project template in this case. And the second one I created just by dragging the view controller onto the screen, onto the design surface rather. Okay. Now, within each, um, within each controller, we have a view. As you can see here by the white rectangle that is highlighted with blue, I can select it. I can select the second one over here as well. And within each view, we can add additional subviews. So in this first uh, controller, I've added two subviews, one being an UI image view, which we can add by which I added here by dragging and dropping an image view from under the data view section in the toolbox. And the second thing is just a button that I've added and gave it the text open drawing. On the second controller, likewise, I have uh, similarly just two uh, buttons, one called back, and then I gave it the title back, and another one I said change color. And we'll see what that does in a minute. Now back to our first uh, view controller and its view. I want to talk about a few of the things in here. So when the project is set up, uh, this first one that's added via the project template, this first controller, is already set with a controller class. In this case, I called the project VS Designer Demo. So the controller's name ends up being VS Designer Demo View Controller. And if I were to select the controller, which I can do here, if you see the lower left in the gray, this gray uh, box down the bottom, if I click this little button in the lower left of it, that's where I can actually select the view controller. And you can see how the whole thing turns a, a light blue overlay. And once I have that view controller selected, I can assign it a class name. Again, this one's already assigned by the project template. But when I do that, though, if it weren't already assigned, such as in the second controller we have over here, where I could set that, by giving it a name in the properties pane under identity class, a class is actually, gen that's what, what will generate the class, which is kind of like the code behind, you can think of it, where um, um, any controls or properties or event handlers, things like that, would go with that are associated with uh, the views that are added to this controller. Right? So again, back to looking back at our first uh, controller and the views that we've added. For the image view, what I've done is I've gone ahead after I added it and sized it just by dragging you know, the little uh, the, the handles that are along the sides there. I can go over into the property pane and I can give it a name. Well, just like you can in any other sort of designer you would use in Visual Studio. In this case, I called it image view. And when I do that, I then get a property that in the, the particular controller class, the one that's set, um, that we just looked at, VS Designer Demo View Controller, I'd actually get a property that I can then program against that image view, right? That particular control. Same with the button, whereas I did the same thing and I gave it a name, open draw button. Now, along with that, there's all the kind of other things you'd expect in here, like, you know, uh, attributes, visual attributes, like the color, the text in this case, the, the, the sizing things, shadows, all, all kinds of stuff that you can change on views. On images, there's all the things that you can change on views, but plus things that are specific to the image. Now, when I don't set the image on a UI image view, I get this little um, placeholder of a mountain and the little sun that goes in there. Let's, um, let's run this and see what that ends up doing. So I'm going to run it. I'm, up, I'm already connected to my build host, which is running on my Mac here. And what I'm done is I'm remote desktoped into my Windows machine. So I'm actually running on a physical Windows machine that I remote desktop from the Mac. That way I can just have one big screen because the simulator that I'm connected to is going to all launch from inside of the Mac. Yeah, but I'm, on, I'm running inside of Windows, and I, I launch uh, the application from Visual Studio, and then the simulator opens up on my Mac desktop. And I can see there the simulator running iOS 7.1, and it has, you know, where the image view is at runtime, shows nothing. You get, only get that placeholder at design time, and the open drawing button does nothing as well. So let's do some stuff to make that actually a, a little bit more interesting. So if I wanted to set um, a you know, properties on any controls. Again, I just select it as you would expect and you'd set properties in the property pane. On a UI image view, one thing I can set is for any image that's been added already into the project, and I have a couple in here already that I've added into the solution, um, I can come in here to the image property and see they show up in the drop down. And the one I want to set that I'm going to use in this case is just this monkey.png that I've already uh, previously manually added in as a resource into the uh, project. So when I select that, You'll see the image changes at design time, and I get a rendering 
of the, um, the, the particular image, in this case, this nice picture of a monkey. There's some other attributes I'll call your attention to that you, know, you could then set, and then would be dependent. You know, they would vary based on the type of control you're talking about, the type of view. But the case of an image view, um, you can see here, if you look at the, the little border around the image view, that's the bounds of the thing. And you can see the image is spilling over the side of it. That's because I don't have this clip subview set. So if I select the clip subviews, you'll see there, see, then clips to the, you know, right to the, to the border, right to the rectangle. And if I undo it, it unclips and it'll just do that, right? So likewise, there's some other properties and other ones to look at. It's like, you see he sizes nicely, the monkey. There's different modes that you can set, like aspect fit. If I were to just make him um, um, aspect fill, you know, then you'll see it'll change the or try center, maybe. See, now it changes and it's like, you know, he gets the full size of the thing. I don't want that because it's, it's a little bit bigger image in this case. So I'm just going to change it back to aspect fit. Or excuse me, maybe aspect fill. Yeah, that's how I had it. That looks good. So now I have my image of the monkey. If I were to run it now, let's just do it and you can take a look. You'll see. Not only do I get that at design time, but as you'd expect, at runtime, unlike the placeholder image, I should see the monkey if all worked well. And there he is. Great. But this button doesn't do anything. So let's you now see what that's all about. So, and why, why did I add this second screen? So what I want to do here in this application is I have this, this image view, which holds an image, right? It's actually an instance of a UI image. Um, a class from a, a both UI image view and UI image are classes that come out of UI kit, part of Cocoa Touch, right? When I click on this UI button, though, I wanted to do is I wanted to sh show to this second screen. And the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it like utility kind of style of application is what they're called. And I want it to flip to the second screen. So let's see how we can do that with the designer without even writing any code. So on the in the storyboard here, I can control click on it, and I can just drag a line, as you see, when I control click to the screen I want to transition to. Right? And it'll create something called a segue. And in this case, I want to do a modal segue, basically to modally open up the, the second screen. See, there's a little arrow there now. Yeah, if I click on that here, if I click on the segue, you can see I get some options to control how it transitions. So I could you know, just cover vertical. Let's just do this flip horizontal, and I'll show you what that did there. Not sure what happened there. We lost our image there, so we'll just go over here and reset that. Great. And I'll save all that. Now, if I turn around and I run the thing, just by dragging, you know, control, drag to the second screen, or to the second controller to create our segue and selecting um, um, how we want it to animate the transition from a drop down in the properties. Once the thing launches and runs here from Visual Studio it connects over to our Mac and launches up the simulator again. And I do open drawing. Now I see I get that nice uh, animation. Pretty cool, right? And this I can go back and I can go back to here. But you can see here there's nothing here. Now he's gone. Well, what happened there? So let me show you what, um, what we've done in the code and then I'll come back and I'll run it and show you what happened and why that went blank and what it's actually doing. So now, once I've gone to the second screen, now I have these two buttons that I've already previously added. One called, you know, I gave it a name back, and I gave the other one, um, um, the title rather, co change color. More importantly, I gave them names, back button up in here in the, under the identity, and change color button. After I give them a name like that, and then I double click on it, what it does is it creates an event handler, as you'd expect. Um, no more having to deal with outlets directly, if folks are familiar with that, like you would do from Xcode. You can just double click, give your controller a name, double click on it, and boom, you're into your controller writing an event handler. Um, with code to handle the click, you know, nice and easy. And you can see in here, you could also do it from the events tab. You can see I have already pre-wired pre up this color change buttons, um, touch up inside event handler, and the same thing I did here for the back button. Then what happens is you dropped right into the code, in this case for this other controller, which is, this, I called it drawing controller, right? And this drawing controller guy here, I've already added a little bit of code. So I'll show you that and come back to that in a second. But here's the code for touch up inside, right? And I've already added here. What that thing's going to do, it's basically going to um, create an image. And I'll show you what it's creating an image from in a second. And the color change actually sets, changes a color. I'll also show you what it's changing. What, what it's set it, get, getting the image from and what it's creating a color from is a custom view that I've actually written already 
called drawing view. This, uh, the details of drawing view are, uh, are beyond the scope of what we're talking about here today. Just know it uses OpenGL and the OpenTK bindings, which are C-sharp, like a low-level sort of C-sharp binding to OpenGL. And I use that to make this little, uh, uh, this little paint application or this little paint view that I created. And in this case, because working with OpenGL, I find that a little easier to work with in code. So I'm, I'm, I'm creating a couple buttons or the simpler things from the designer, but then when I want to do something that maybe a little more intricate, I can just as easily do it in code and I can you know, use, use both together. So in this case, I'm adding the buttons to do things from the designer, I'm adding a view, um, this is a custom view that I've created to do some drawing in code and adding it to the, to the view from the controller, which is actually created from the designer. I'm adding the drawing view, I call it, in this view hierarchy. And then in the button handlers, again, I come down for that drawing view, and when the color changes, I, I have a method on the drawing view that I created to allow it to change the color of the paint brush. And in the touch-up inside on the back button, before I go back, I'm actually going to create this thing called a UI image from the current drawing that is in that view. Right? Let me show you what that does, and then we'll come back to this notification center in set business in a second, and I'll explain to you what that is next. First, let's run it now, just like we did before, and I'll show you what would happen on the second view and why it turned white when we went back to the first screen and flipped back. So, run that guy. Wait for it to launch. It takes a second to launch when you're doing it remotely like that, like this. So there it is here. It is our default monkey that we had set in the thing. It, uh, first, when it's opened, now I go open drawing view. It's white right now. That's just the color I made the background of my uh, drawing view. You can see I have a default color I set it to as blue, right? And then I can just I just hard coded it. It can make a color picker or something like this. I just have a change color to manually change the color to this little purpley brush that I have. Okay. Then when I click back, the reason it turned white before is because I hadn't drawn anything, so it just gave it. It was just a white image, right? Now I'm taking the I'm basically doing that code that was in the touch-up inside of it on our button first. I'm actually drawing what's in that particular drawing view, and I'm sending it back as a UI image to this, this first screen and then resetting that to the UI image view in place of the monkey that we set in the designer. So let me show you how we actually send that thing back. So if I were to come, we can close the properties now. Just to complete the story, this is really handy when you're moving between controllers um, or between parts of your application, whether it be the designer or otherwise, but in particular kind of useful in the designer when some things are getting created, um, um, not by just you know constructing them yourselves in code. So when I hit the back button, uh, one thing to, to note is the way it actually no navigates backwards and flips back is because I call it dismiss view controller with this true as the first uh, argument, and that animates it, right? So that's how I get the reverse animation to like, you know, to rotate and flip back to the first screen. And this code up above it is just, you know, creating a UI image view and just using a little bit of core graphics code to draw it, as I mentioned earlier. Once I have that UI image view populated, I use something called the NS Notification Center, which basically sends messages throughout the application to, to registered observers. It's an observer pattern, right? So I'm, I'm going to use the default center, which is the default NS Notification Center. Usually that's all you need to do. To use. And I'm going to post a notification in this because I'm going to do it with a string, which is just a name. And I'm going to put some NS object, which is the base class of all the objects in Cocoa Touch. And I'm in this case, the NS object I'm going to place in it in this notification to pass through to any interested observers or registered observers is the image, the UI image, right? And on the first screen, the first controller, you'll note when I when I created it, it gets constructed by the designer, because it's created by the designer. So I have to have a, a constructor that looks like this that takes the in pointer. And then in there, I just register as an register this particular class as an observer, right in the constructor um, for that particular notification, which I happen to call arbitrarily drawing notification. And it gets sent the NS notification object. The NS notification object has an object which gets lets me get at that underlying object that I put in the underlying NS object, the image in the case here. I can cast it out to the what I know it ha is in this particular instance, a UI image, and boom, I can set it right to the UI image views instance. And that's how I get it so that when I, you know, I run this guy, you can draw on the second screen and have the data and object like that pass throughout the system, in this case, right back to the first uh, view controller and its subsequent view and image view that you can set. And we'll run it one more time, take a look. There's our default. There's the segue, which we get in that animate transition without writing any code. There's some drawing code. There's changing color with an event handler, handler wired up from a button. And there's dismissing the, the view controller to animate backwards and sending a notification that is then picked up on the first screen and reapplied into the image. 
So that's a, a look at how you can you know create a, uh, applications um, with the iOS designer for um, um, Visual Studio, Xamarin iOS designer for Visual Studio, work with um, applications and controls from UIKit right within the design surface and then hook things up programmatically as well to build uh, applications quite nicely um, within uh, Visual Studio. And thank you.